everyone, this is Matt Perez, and today we're going to kick off a basic intro series on DriveWorks Solo. Now, I highly recommend if you're getting interested in DriveWorks that you check out the DriveWorks Express videos I've done. Try to follow along with a simple project. DriveWorks Express is included in every seat of SolidWorks, and it's there to play with. If you understand the basic concepts that are used to build DriveWorks Express models, then making the transition to DriveWorks Solo is going to be a little bit easier. The things I want to focus on today are mainly the differences in the workflow. Going from DriveWorks Express to DriveWorks Solo does take a little bit of adjustment. Now, how you set your models up is going to be the same basic process, so we're going to do a very simple model and really focus on the difference in workflow. Now, ultimately, we're going to build up to a more complicated video series, but it's really important that we have the basics down so we understand how things work. So to get started, I'm going to just create a new part file. Now, this doesn't have to be a fancy part. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple part to control with just a few dimensions and see how we can manipulate that. So to start with, I'm going to go to the top plane and I'm simply going to draw a circle. I'm going to give it a dimension and we're going to name this dimension. It's going to be called CIR DIA. So we have a good understanding that this is actually our circle diameter. We can exit this, we're going to extrude the model, and I'm just going to take it up one inch. Now, this value here, we want to control the height as well. So I'm going to double click on that value, and instead of D1 at boss extrude 1, I'm going to name this CYL height. Now, it's important that we name these dimensions because when we capture them for our DriveWorks Express or DriveWorks Solo models, whatever we name these dimensions are going to be automatically created as the file name or the name of whatever we're capturing. Of course, you can rename that, but it's always a good indicator that you're doing things right if you understand as soon as you bring these values in when you're capturing them. All right, the last thing we want to do is we want to add a fillet to the top of this. Now, the fillet diameter is, let's just go ahead and make it a quarter inch and say OK. I'm not going to be controlling the value of the fillet, but rather we're going to look at how we can turn it on and off. One big thing that we can do in DriveWorks Solo is add a lot more functionality to the user form. Of course, right now we're dealing with the basics, so I'm not too concerned with how much functionality we can add, but I really want to just show you the process here. So to get started, we need to save this. I'm going to go ahead and just call this basic cylinder and before we move any farther I'm gonna go ahead and do a view screen capture and just capture an image of that so this means now I can go ahead and open paintbrush and I can save this as an image file we'll be able to use this in our user form alright so the next step in the process now that we have our basic model is to go into DriveWorks Solo on our task pane and then I'm going to go to the top left to open or create a project. Now we have a few options here. We have create a new project, open an existing project, or open last project. So the create a new project is a good option. So we're going to hit next. And you'll notice that we have standard projects we can import from DriveWorks Express. So if you've already created some projects in DriveWorks Express, you can bring all that information in and add a lot more functionality that is provided in DriveWorks Solo or we can use our empty projects which is what we're going to do but also note that we have templates here now these templates will open up these standard projects that have already been created in the DriveWorks Solo library for you now the cupboard and the entrance canopy these are things that if you've seen any DriveWorks Solo videos you probably will notice these models right away alright so now that we've selected our standard empty project we need to browse for a location now I'm going to go ahead and place it in the same place that we just saved our image. So this is going to be my location and then I need to name the project. So we're just going to call this intro project and finish. Now once we've done that, we've now created the DriveWorks Pro image file and all the information that the project needs in that same location. You'll notice that we don't have any captured information, so the next step in the process is very similar to the DriveWorks Express workflow, is to capture the model. We currently only have one part open. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin my task pane open. So this is currently our active SolidWorks part. So that means in the capture section, we can go ahead and click to capture the active model. 
There are no dimensions and features that are currently captured because we just started the process, but if I double click on Boss Extrude 1, it gives me access to those features and those dimensions. So I'm going to grab the 3 inch dimension, which comes in as CIR DIA. If we want to rename this, we certainly can at any point in time and add that to our captured dimensions. I'm going to grab the 1 inch dimension, add it. And then I want to add this fillet, but I'm not going to double click on it because I'm not concerned with the dimension value. I'm more concerned with the actual feature. I'm just going to name this fillet and I'm going to add it. So now we've captured two dimensions, our circle diameter, our cylinder height, and we've captured one feature, our fillet. Now this workflow should look very similar. We have custom properties, we have drawings, but now we have replacement models in file formats. These are things that we'll talk about in a more complicated example. They don't really apply to this basic example, but just make a quick note that there is more functionality built in here. Okay, now that we've captured our model and we've captured our dimensions and features, what's the next step in the process? Well, I'm going to leave that for the next video, but we're going to move on to creating forms, our workflow, and any rules that we need to use. If you guys have any questions on what we've done here to start our project, please email me at solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.